In the last lesson, we learned about how to solve a system of equations by graphing. And when we graphed uh, two lines or a parabola and a line, uh, whatever it is that we were graphing, we were interested in the point of intersection or the uh, in, an ordered pair that would fit in both of the original equations in our system. Uh, in this section, we're going to learn a method to algebraically find these values rather than trying to graph and do our best guess or have uh, computer technology do a numerical analysis to figure out that spot. We're actually going to do some algebra to get some exact answers. The concept behind substitution is this, that you want to find a value, uh, a value for one variable and plug it in to the other equation because what we're looking for is a value where both of these are true. Let's look at, at problem one here as an example. Uh, my first equation here says that x is equal to 2y minus 1. And I want ordered pairs where of x and y that will make that work. My second equation is 3x plus 2y equals 7. And I'm looking for x, y pairs that will fit in both of these. Well, because they have to fit in both of these, in the first equation, x has to be equal to 2y minus 1. So if I also want this to work in the second equation, then x if I put in 2 minus 1 for x in the second equation, I will get a single equation that only has y's in it. And I know how to solve equations that only have one letter in them. So let's take a look at what happens here. The first equation says x equals 2y minus 1. So in the second equation, I'm going to go 3 times. Instead of x, I'm going to use this 2y minus 1 requirement from my first equation. And then plus 2y equals 7. So all I did is I replaced this x with the 2y minus 1. Now really the only thing you have to be careful of in these substitution processes is that you need to remember that when you're substituting a group of things in to make sure to use parentheses because over here I need to multiply the 3 by the whole group which is going to uh, necessitate me using the distributive property. This new equation here looks a little bit more complex but it's actually way simpler because there's only one variable in it and I know how to solve it. So let's do it. Here, I want to get rid of the parentheses, so I end up with 6y minus 3 plus 2y equals 7. I'd like to um, get the y by itself, but right now there's two of them. They're on the same side of the equation, so I just go ahead and do what it says. 6y plus 2y is 8y. I can combine those like terms. And now I have this slightly simpler looking equation. Uh, still want to get the y by itself, but now there's only one of them. I'm going to get rid of the, plus th or the minus 3 first by adding 3 to each side. And then I'm going to get rid of the 8 by dividing by 8 on each side. And in this case, I'm going to end up with y equals 10 eighths. That will reduce to 5 fourths. We can use this as a nice exact answer. It's in fractional form. Uh, depending on your application, you could get decimal form or anything along those lines if you needed to. All right. Now, if this is my value for y, remember that when we graphed our equations before, um, we were looking for an intersection point, and that would be an ordered pair that had both an x and a y coordinate. So if once you find one variable, you're really not done until you find the other variable that goes along with it in that ordered pair match. So what do I need to do? Well, now that I know a value for y, I can substitute it back into one of my original equations. Because I want my equation to work, or my ordered pair to work in both equations, you can plug this value into either, oops, either equation that you want. So let's try that. Here, I'll just use the first equation, x equals 2y minus 1. I just found that y was 5 fourths, so I'm going to have 2 times 5 fourths minus 1. x is already alone, so I just need to evaluate this. Think of this as 2 over 1. That gives me 5 halves minus 1. And now I would need a common denominator. 5 halves minus 2 halves is 3 halves. And now I found the x value that goes along with it. So if y is 5 fourths, x has to be 3 halves. And my intersection point for these two lines is the ordered pair 3 halves comma 5 fourths. Remember the x always comes first and the y always comes second. So make sure to pay attention to that when you put your values into your equation. Now the cool thing about all of this is that this solution works in both equations. So I could, for example, put 3 halves for x and 5 fourths for y in the second equation, and it should work. Um, let's just verify that it does here. So if I have 3x plus 2y equals 7, if I use x as 3 halves and y as 5 fourths, let's see if we get 7. 
Here this gives me 9 halves. Here we can reduce a little bit. We get 9 halves plus 5 halves. Uh, 9 plus 5 is 14. 14 halves is in fact 7. So um, this ordered pair works in the second equation and here we kind of did some solving and know that it works in the first equation as well. So you don't have to do all of this. Once you find the xy pair you're done but it's a nice way to double check if, especially if you're on an exam or something like that and you have a couple extra minutes and want to make sure you did everything correctly. All right, so in this problem, notice that the x was by itself, so I plugged in 2y minus 1 in for x in the other equation. It really doesn't matter which variable you're substituting for, it's just that you need one of the variables to be by themselves. In problem number 2 here, we have y equals 3x minus 1 and y equals 2x plus 5. Well, if we look at the first equation, y is equal to 3x minus 1. Well, that's neat. I can take that 3x minus 1 and plug it in for y in the other equation down here. So if I do that, instead of y, I'm going to have the 3x minus 1 restriction equals, and then I finish the equation that I was using on the bottom. So I took the y value from the top equation and stuck it into the bottom equation. Uh, here's a nice one, not too bad to solve. I want to um, get x by itself, but there's more than one of them. They're on different sides of the equation. So the first thing I would do is subtract 2x from each side. 3x minus 2x is 1x, and you don't have to write the one in front if you don't want, and then we can finish getting the x by itself. And I end up, in this case, with x is equal to 6 as one of my as part of my solution. Again, don't forget, just like in solving with graphing, we're looking for an ordered pair final solution. And so here I've only found one half of that ordered pair. In order to find the other half, go ahead and uh, go back to either of your original equations. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the um, y equals 3x minus 1. I just found out that x has to be 6. And so that's pretty easy to do. 3 times 6 is 18, 18 minus 1 is 17, and my final ordered pair solution for this system is 6 comma 17. And again, you can verify for yourself if you put 6 in for x here, 2 times 6 gives me 12, plus 5 is 17. It works in the other equation as well. All right, so in both of these uh, last equations, notice that one of the variables was by itself. In this problem right here, we had a y by itself that we were able to substitute in the other equation. In problem number one, we had an x by itself, which we were able to substitute in another equation. Sometimes um, your equations will be in different forms, and there won't actually be a letter by itself. However, we can still use the substitution process. Um, what you have to do is you need to get one variable alone in one equation. And then you need to plug it in for that variable in the other equation. To solve. So if I'm looking at problem number three, I can get this x alone, I can get this y alone, I can get this x alone, or I can get this y alone. Any one of these will work, but you need to get one variable alone in one equation. Um, notice, for example, if you got the x alone in the top equation, we'd have to add 3y to each side and then divide by 4 on each side. That's going to lead us to be doing quite a bit of work with fractions. And so, just as a recommendation, if it's ever possible where you have a variable that's almost by itself, like in this case the y, there's no coefficient in front of it, I would try to get this y by itself in the second equation alone because it's going to avoid some fraction work. And so, uh, you can certainly do it with the fraction work. It's just people tend to, tends to take a little bit longer and people often make silly mistakes that way. All right, so, oops, sorry about that. Let's go ahead then and get the y by itself in the second equation. It has 3x being added to it, so I can subtract 3x from each side, and I end up with y equals 10 minus 3x. So here, this is the y value from the second equation. So if y is, has to be equal to 10 minus 3x to make this work, I would need to stick y into the first equation to have this relationship hold. So um, when I do that, I'm going to have 4x minus 3 times instead of y, I'm going to plug in 10 minus 3x equals 9. And now I can go ahead and solve for x. Again, make sure you use the distributive property because we need to get rid of those parentheses. All of that y value needs to get multiplied by that minus 3. So here I'm going to have 4x, then I'm going to have a minus 30 and a plus 9x because it's a negative 3 times a negative 3x. I have 4x plus 9x both on the same side of the equation, so I just put them together to combine my like terms on the left, 
and now I can solve this for x now that I just have a single value of x. I'll add 30 to each side first, 13x equals 39. Divide each side by 13, and in this case I get x equals 3 as a solution. That's great, but again, final answer should be an ordered pair. So I'm going to take that answer, plug it back into the any of my equations that I have up here. Now, um, generally the equation where you did the substitution is a nice one to plug it back into. Um, and the reason is because the y is already by itself, so it's fairly simple to work with. So I have y equals 10 minus 3x, so when I plug in 3 for x, I have 10 minus 3 times 3. Make sure you do your order of operations y equals 10 minus 9, so y equals 1. So my ordered pair solution that works for this system of equations is 3, 1. And again, if you just want a sanity check, you can go back to your original equations here, plug in 3 for x and 1 for y, and you should get um, an equa a true equation for both of them. Uh, and sure enough, here if you put in 3, you'd get 12 minus 3, which is 9. Here, if you put in 3 for x and 1 for y, you'd get 9 plus 1, which is 10. So um, definitely a solution that works, and we can verify that in each equation as well.